Welcome back everybody. Today we're talking about centroids. Okay, we're skipping ahead a little bit, but I think this makes logical sense to cover next. What is a centroid? Okay. That's a weird word. I've never heard that before. I've heard of like center of gravity. Is that what you're talking about? Well, a centroid can be more than just center of gravity. Okay. Or the center of weight. Okay. It can be the center of mass, the center of area, the center of volume, the center of pressure, okay? So it's a lot more than what we think of just center of gravity, okay? But it is a location in space, okay? It is, like if I had a map, the centroid would be the location where if I put my, the way I like to think about it, if I put my finger on that point, I could balance that whole shape on the end of my finger, right? So centroid is a location, therefore it has X and Y coordinate points, okay? And of course, in 3D, it would have a Z coordinate point. But it's not just any old coordinate point, it's the point where I could balance the whole thing on the end of my finger, okay? So we put a little extra something, something on there just to denote that. And that are these little bars above these. And cleverly, you're never going to guess what we call these. This is called X bar and Y bar. <laughs> okay. All right. And so this denotes the X coordinate of that point where the center of gravity, the center of weight, the center of mass is. This is the Y coordinate where that point is. And of course, like I said, in 3D, we'll also have a um, Z bar. Okay? So we can have any of those. Now in this chapter, there's a couple things. Number one, in the very back of your book, okay, I've got a book right here. In the very back of your book, there's a table, okay, right here. You can see it here, okay? And that table is called the Geometric Properties of Line and Area Elements. And it basically has the equations, the formulas, or the location of the centroids for a lot of common shapes. Common shapes like circles, rectangles, triangles, parabolas, uh, all kinds of different shapes, okay? So this is a table that I typically will put in the, on the back of the test so that uh, the students um, can refer to this. Um, but we'll also be deriving where these come from in this chapter. So in this chapter, there is, there is a new equation, right? So far, all of the equations, I had a student one time said, I'm trying to memorize the equations in the statics. How are you going to memorize them when we just make them all up every time, okay? But there is an equation for this chapter. It may be our first equation of the semester, and it goes like this. X bar is equal to the sum of the X sub I times A sub I divided by the sum of A sub I, okay? The little sub I just means... How many elements do you have? Typically, we'll have some kind of crazy shape. We may divide it up into a whole bunch of different parts. And if I have seven different parts, then that would be, I'd have an A1, an A2, an A3, A4, A5, right? And the sum means add all those up. And we will certainly do this in some example problems where this makes absolute sense to you, okay? And of course, Y bar is going to be equal to the sum of y sub i, a sub i, divided by the sum of a sub i, okay? Now, the nice thing about this equation is, is that we can substitute lots of things into it, okay? So this same equation could be um, the sum of x sub i, v sub i, divided by the sum of v sub i, okay? And same down here, over the sum of the v sub i. So what does that mean? Now... Instead of being area, right, the center of area, maybe you had a 2D area, now it's the center of volume, okay? What else could you substitute in there? Well, you could do uh, X sub I, M sub I, the center of mass, okay? You could put a P in there for pressure. Um, you could put a W for weight, right? You can do all kinds of substitutions in this equation, and it works exactly the same. So this is kind of the central equation for this chapter, and the other one is, of course, z bar, is the sum of the z sub i, a sub i's divided by sum of a sub i, okay? So, 
what is a centroid? How, where are these, where do these equations come from? They're actually little moment equations. So let's say that I have my book here, okay? If I take my book and I try and balance it on my hand here, right? Oh, okay. When I balance my book on my hand, there is a force on one half of the book. Okay, let's say it's this right there. Okay, so there's a force on this half of the book that's trying to rotate my hand that way. And that force comes from the weight of the book. It's trying to rotate it that way. Okay, on the other side of my hand, all right, is another force over here. All right, my little arrows, stand up arrows. Right, is a, is a force on this side of my hand that's trying to rotate it in the opposite direction. So when my hand gets right in the middle, these two forces here are balanced. That's the moment. That's the centroid. That allows us to tell where the centroid is, is when we balance that moment, okay? And that's where these equations here come from, okay? So again, if I, if I want to find the centroid of this, if I know where it is, I should be able to put my finger at that location and then that thing balances on my finger. Ah, I'm going to have to use two fingers, right? So now my finger is at the centroid of that book, okay, and it balances. So let's talk about some other shapes. Okay, what if we talk about my little fisherman here? Can you see my little fisherman? I'm kind of up, getting up close to you, okay? I'm going to put him on my finger, okay? He's made out of little nails. He's got a lead fish over here. You don't want to eat that fish because he's full of lead. He might get lead poison. Okay, so what's happening here, okay? The little guy has a mass over here, which is trying to rotate him that way, right? The fish made of lead certainly has a mass. It's trying to rotate him the other way. But when both of those forces balance, he'll sit there on his heels. So where is the center? Where is the centroid of the system? The centroid of the system is right here at, 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 this, at his feet, okay? So the center of gravity will always be right there in the middle when it comes to try and balance something. Okay, so what happens if I move the fish that way? I scoot the fish away from the little guy, okay? I'm going to bend his fishing pole, and now the fish is way over there, okay? So when I let him go, what's going to happen, okay? Remember, the weight hasn't changed, but the weight has gotten farther away, so what has changed? The moment has increased, right? That turning force. So I want to let him go now. Watch what happens. Whoa, he falls off my hand, okay? Look what happens now. So that system wants to right itself. It wants to be in equilibrium. And so that moment was too big. It was too far away. So it actually rotated over here. So now, now the force is on this side. The force times this distance is the same as this guy's center of mass times this distance, right? And the guy balances out. But still, the centroid is at his feet. All right? Let me show you one more example to kind of prove this. All right, so what's the weirdest shape you can think of? Did you think of this shape? The great state of Texas. The greatest state, okay? The great state of Texas. It's a pretty weird shape, okay? I put a dot right here where I think the centroid of this shape is. I may have run this experiment before and I kind of know where it is. But I want to show you a trick here, okay? I want to suspend. I have some screws in my map here around, all the way around. And I can suspend this map by one of those screws. And if I suspend it by one of those screws, what happens to the centroid, right? It should go directly below it, shouldn't it? Let's try it and see what happens, okay? So here's what I have. I've got a little lead weight here on a, on a string. And I have a little loopity do in my string. Let's hook it to East Texas over here. You gotta love East Texas, right? And let's put our string in front of us and let's just hang this and see where it goes. I can't see it because I'm behind the map. Is it through the dot? Did it go right through the dot? Okay, I think it did. Okay, where do you wanna try? Let's try, let's try down here on the coast, okay? Did you know that the ocean touches Texas? What? That's true. Okay, hanging straight down. Where did it go? Did it go through the dot again? I hope I didn't prove myself wrong. Okay, it's a little off to the side. Well, it's also touching my map. Uh oh, 
it's pretty good, isn't it? Okay, let's try it again. Let's go, oh, let's go over here to Big Ben. Okay, here's Big Ben. Oh, my map is upside down in my hand, so I only have one hand. Okay, here's Big Bend over here. Oh, come on, Loop, cooperate with me. Okay. It's not cooperating with me. Did you see it? Okay, I got it. I got it. I got it. There it goes. Okay, so here's Big Bend. Okay, now Texas is all upside down here. Where does it go this time? Right through there, doesn't it? So no matter where you go, the centroid is always directly below you. And for those of you out there wondering just where the heck is the centroid of Texas, it's at Mercury, Texas, a little bitty town right north of Brady, Texas. There you go. Okay, so this weird shape. So what I should be able to do ugh, is put this on the end of my thumb there, right? Right on that dot. And I should be able to balance that shape on the centroid right so my thumb is right on that dot and look perfectly balanced so that's the location where that centroid is that's that x y x bar and y bar to balance that shape that's so cool all right so the last thing i want to tell you is is that those equations in the back of the book we can we'll be able to derive those two this is the first chapter in statics where we're going to use the c word okay and that is this equation here, x bar is equal to the integral of x dA over the integral of dA. Of course, integral in the calculus language just means sum, right? So it's the same as this guy over here, okay? This one is just using little elements to add them up, but this one over here, it, when we have weird shapes that we don't, uh, we don't have, it's not in the table in the back of our book, we'll have to use the calculus method right, to come up and solve for what is x bar, what is that centroid, and of course y bar is the integral of y dA over the integral of dA. Now this is pretty low level calculus, that's the C word in case you're wondering, <laughs> pretty low level calculus stuff, and I will show it to you in the next video where it makes absolute perfect sense to you. So there's your introduction to what is a centroid. Get your map out and see if you can balance Colorado. Not that fun. It's just a rectangle, okay? So anyway, all right, I'll see you back here next time.